Hey Virgo, welcome to your morning musing. I hope this finds you well. Bringing you this little general morning musing for Virgo sun and rising. As you know, or if you're new to the channel, that this is in addition to the full spread reading that will come out later today. The best way not to miss that is to be subscribed and make sure you click that little bell icon so you get notifications. Um, and it's always good to recheck that anyway, because sometimes the platform does updates and resets to defaults. It has happened for a few people. I've seen that in the comments. So double check your subscription. And just a little um, a little note, I've been telling everyone this um, all week, but um, because the morning musings are new, they're not getting a lot of views, right? As people come on board and get used to the fact that I've added something to the channel and they're discovering them, it's starting to tick up, but it's been slow going. And the way that the algorithms in YouTube works is it's all about that first hour. So if a video doesn't get many views in the first hour, YouTube just doesn't show it or recommend it, right? You have to go looking for it. But the problem is that it doesn't just happen with these little videos. It happens to all my videos, to all the readings. Even the full spreads are not getting suggested and recommended as much um, because it's channel based, actually. So I just want to put out an appeal to you, Virgo. I know <laughs> my Virgo brothers and sisters will support me, but um, just a little appeal to kind of be sure to watch these little morning musings. Um, you know, if, if it doesn't speak to you, just turn off the volume and let it play. <laughs> Honestly, at this point, I just want to be able to keep offering them. Um, you know, the, it, it's doing a little bit better because Aries through Leo have really come through. So make me proud, Virgo, and help a girl out. Like them, share them. Um, if you're not yet subscribed, this would be a, a great opportunity to do that. Um, all of that feeds into the algorithm. So I'm going to thank you in advance for having my back. <laughs> and don't forget to come back later this afternoon for your full spread. These little mini readings, about 75 to 80 percent of the time, the energy show up in the full spreads. Not always, but um, so this just gives you a little bit of the theme that's just for you, Virgo. So I hope that helps. I'm pulling here a, um, this is numerology guidance. So let's see what numerology guidance wants to come through for Virgo today. Oh, this came through for another sign. 16, rebirth. That's beautiful, isn't it? One and six is seven, Virgo. So... We've got that beautiful connection to your higher self, to spirit, all focused on rebirth, um, transformation. I'm going to read a little bit for you just so you get a feel for it. People criticize me in the comments all the time for, for, for reading out of the book. Let me just tell you, <laughs> even the Oracle creators read out of their own guidebooks. It's, you know, it's a lot of information that's often hard to commit to memory. So um, indulge me. This card indicates a time of major transformation and transition that will result in significant personal growth. By drawing this card, you have entered a period of spiritual awakening and rebirth where you have the opportunity to align with your higher self and the overarching principles that guide you. This is where you surrender to the changes around you and prepare to be the best you can be. You are being encouraged to trust and believe that a magical future awaits. But first, you need to let go of the old in order to experience the new. Take time to reevaluate your core values and reexamine your life and then eliminate any superficial foundations that don't align with your higher self and your dreams. This is a time to recognize and rise above any ego-based thoughts and behaviors for humility and authenticity are the keys to your success. In order to improve your current situation, you are being to ask to adjust to and harmonize with the natural rhythm and cycles of your life, cycles that are leading you toward a higher level of understanding and awareness. 
This transformation is inevitable. So know that this is a very exciting time for you are about to become the very best you can be. Boom. <laughs> you heard it here. So I love this card. Um, uh, the rebirth card to me is, um, it is transformation, which is the death card, but even more so, it is the um, judgment card. That second chance, being called up, the rebirth portion of the program, right? Because both those cards are Scorpio, just going to let you know that. So um, we've got a little bit of the flavor of death and um, death and judgment here. What a beautiful beginning. Uh, I love that you're getting that spiritual awakening, tapping into your higher self, shedding a lot of the ego-based behaviors, really taking a good look at who we are. I'm throwing myself in here. You know I'm a Virgo, so um, I claim that card as well. Let's see what's going on in your connection, Virgo. Let's just get a little... <clears throat> have a little musing about it. Hmm, Eight of Cups. Yes, good. So this, this is your anchor card. Right? In alignment with this, it would mean walking away from what no longer serves you on an emotional level. Look how his back is turned to the drama, to the disappointments, to something that did not fulfill him. I'm saying a him because it's a, ma a male in the, in, the, um, in the graphic. And looking out in the other direction, guided by the moon. I often see this card as the beginning of the hermit's journey and Ascent, and Hermit is a Virgo card, so I'm going to stick with my, my, uh, oh, look at this. This is what you need to focus on. This is what you need to focus on. Look at the beautiful, I'm so glad I chose this deck. I love, there's the, you know, the third eye. <laughs> there's your intuition, your third eye, your ability to see with the light of the divine. Oh my gosh, just beautiful. Doesn't that look like the Holy Grail cup? <laughs> I know, I'm silly. Ace of Cups. So you're focusing on this this love of a lifetime. So the, the block, the challenge, or the dynamic is the Three of Pentacles. I'm going to say it's a challenge because the Three of Pentacles is about working together. It is a co-creative energy card. So in, in this deck, it's not as clear, but in most decks, there are like a, two other um, figures in the graphics. So this one's just a little bit different, but remember, this is you, your divine counterpart and spirit, all working together co-creatively to take your connection from something ordinary and transform it into something extraordinary. So this could be the challenge, is about that co-creative energy. Last card, well, what can you expect to do about it? What can you expect to come of it or do about it? Queen of Wands. So I will clarify that because the Queen of Wands often um, has a lot of different interpretations and I don't want to jump the gun on it right now. Um, if I was just doing these cards and I wasn't pulling anything else, I would say what you can do about all of this is, is step into your power. So um, that would just be my off-the-cuff interpretation. The Queen of Wands has shown up as... Um, other people in your readings have uh, Virgo, so I want to be clear. Eight of Cups, please. Yes, there's the Judgment card. Wow. This is prophetic, Virgo. There's some prophecy here. I'm feeling it right now. I really feel the connection of these two cards. That's why I went to the trouble to mention the Judgment card for your rebirth. Judgment is answering the right, walking away from what no longer serves you, whether that's turning your back on drama or just old behaviors, things that have dragged you down and held you down on an emotional level, and going in the direction of answering the call of not just this connection, but this is about the crossroads, meeting that crossroads and opting for the rebirth, opting for the second chance. It's also a card of forgiveness. This is a card of past life um, twin flame soulmates. Really beautiful. There you are, Virgo. So you may have to go it alone here. The um, Nine of Pentacles, as beautiful a card as this is, does represent a single person. Um, she is often found to be, um, you know, someone who has many suitors, but struggles to kind of land 
um, a love life that stays. So that's part of her, her, you know, what the elusive quality of the nine of pentacles, the strength in this nine of pentacles is about self-sufficiency, independence, autonomy, creating the life you want and desire for yourself. So that's a beautiful energy for you to show up in your own reading. We've got the Ace of Cups would be what you need to focus on, Virgo. Could be, it could be connected to the judgment. Wow, yes. <laughs> yes, indeed, lovers. So there's the card of union. Some people see this as uh, the Twin Flame card. I kind of see it as a continuation of just um, that energy of choice where, we, where we're either choosing the other, we're choosing the connection, we're choosing um, ourselves. Gemini and the lovers. There's duality here. There, there's, um, you know, if this, then that. <laughs> Uh, so to me, it's just another card, um, similar to, uh, the judgment and the two of swords where choices have to be made. That's the lover's energy. <sighs> wow. This can't get any, any clearer. Here's what you're focusing on Virgo. Your one true love, your soulmate, your twin. Possibly even a reunion. Ooh, this is a lot. Yes, and on the bottom is the Six of Swords. I will take that because the agenda here should be about moving to calmer waters, getting beyond the tumult, getting beyond the turbulence, and moving to something that's um, bringing in more uh, peace of mind. So let's look at the Three of Pentacles. This is your challenge. Mm-hmm. Someone's holding back. There's some guardedness here. Could be you, could be your divine counterpart. There's some guardedness here. Um, a resistance to revealing one's heart. Actually, in fact, blocking the access to it completely. So somebody here is um, has a lot of walls up, is very guarded, is not wanting to um, provide any measure of access to their heart. Mm, page of Wands. This would indicate to me right here that despite this four of pentacles, there is still a spark there between you. This is, pages are messengers. So the message I'm picking up from this, again, this is just my reflection, is that there's just a spark remaining here that if you just strike the match, it will all ignite. And let's see what the queen of wands has to offer. Why is the Queen of Wands here as what can be expected or what you can do about it? Queen of Wands meaning around this energy. Whoa. Be clear about what you want, Virgo. If this past life soulmate is who you want, right? Then step into your Queen of Wands energy. That's just the way I'm seeing it in this reading. It doesn't always show up that way, but it is today. This is about stepping into your power. It is um, that energy of, of um, operating on your passion, moving forward boldly, fiercely. It feels like it's as if this, this energy here kind of transmutes, is reborn. Remember, our rebirth card is reborn into the Queen of Wands, someone who's very aware of their power. And being clarified by the six of cups all the nostalgia of the past life soulmate that beautiful warm receptive energy someone you've known for lifetime upon lifetime if that's what you want embody the queen of wands so that's yeah and look at the bottom is the uh fool so i will take the fool just as a matter of course it's about um a, a new day choosing this new path again another little energy of choice here the fool says um i'm going to take a calculated risk and make the leap so underneath turn your face to that sun virgo and um prepare to leap into a brand new life 
lovely lovely reading virgo i look forward to seeing you later today i hope you will um click that little bell and um when the full reading is uploaded that you'll join me then look forward looking forward to seeing you bye virgo